Yo, people, yo, people. So there's a reason why the establishment desperately wants Nigel Farage to shut up and disappear. It's because every time he speaks, he exposes them for the rotten, treacherous clowns that they are. And he did it again recently on GB News. Take a listen. The foreign aid budget, and you know, one of the great, one of the great sort of Cameroon successes was that the foreign aid budget had been so massively increased under his premiership, has now been slashed to only 0.36 of gross national income. And the reason is, we're now spending more on asylum seekers than you can even believe. Let's take these figures from the IPPR, which is, you know, a left of centre think tank. In 2019, an asylum seeker coming into Britain across the Channel or on the back of a lorry was costing us £17,000 a year to look after. An asylum seeker that comes now, mostly young men, are costing the taxpayer £41,000 a year each. Yep. You see those boats for the people, those young men, mostly. Each one is costing the taxpayer £41,000 a year. So what we're doing is we're slashing the foreign aid budget where maybe some of the money could be well spent and we're using it for a £4.3 billion a year now bill for asylum seekers. I mean, and this is where it gets real, isn't it? The costs of this are real. Yeah. And now that the Labour government are saying they're going to use fewer hotels... That pushes up the price of the private rental market. This is a real issue. It's a domino effect. There's two main things that I would like to see changed. Foreign criminals in our prisons. It costs £60,000 or mm. thereabouts to take from, from a police officer arresting them to get it through court and get them uh, prosecuted and sent to prison. That's 60000 It's then about £40,000, £45,000 a year each year after mm. that's housed in prisons. Get rid of them. Get them out of the prisons and mm. deport them. If you are in this country and you are not born British with a British passport, yeah. then you should Wonderful. not be housed in our prisons. And there's 10,500 of them. Yeah, yeah. 10,000. I mean, the left and right agree. Uh, this is I mean, it's wonderful to hear. It's almost a coming together. <laughs> <laughs> the the Labour government has a huge majority now to do whatever it wants to do. It's got no excuse um, to, to delay. And, uh, you know, if they want to have a scheme that says we're going to deport um, criminals, yeah. If yeah. They, uh, foreign criminals, if they want a scheme well, that says they're going to deport people immediately on arrival if they are not uh, valid yeah. asylum seekers, they can do that. Yeah, I tell you a funny thing, Randall. The last Labour government, mm. yes, you know, after yes. 2010, and Blunkett started yes. this. I mean, Blunkett, way more right. Well, Blunkett was up for a Rwanda scheme. Way wasn't it? more right yes. than your lot, you yeah. know. And, 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 yeah. and the last Labour government, if you came here illegally, you yep. got booted out. Yes. Yeah. What, uh, what's changed? We've allowed, I'm sorry to say, uh, my wife's a solicitor, we've allowed lawyers to be in charge. Um, you know, the whole, uh, out of that money, I wonder how much, actually, if you sort of take that figure, how much is actually spent on lawyers mm. in the system That's a good point. to defend all translation people. services. Correct. Or, yeah. Yeah. All, all of these things. services that have actually taken over the system. Mm. And, the, I mean, the extraordinary thing, I have some sympathy for that. You know, not only she made a good decision in terms of anonymity mm. earlier, mm, but also... You know, the levers that she has, she is hamstrung to some extent because the lawyers will challenge every single decision and we've got to take that to task. We, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like, JJ, final thought on this, it's almost like it isn't Parliament now where big decisions get made, it is actually in the judicial system. Mm. Yeah. So there you go, there you go. Nigel still remains pretty much the only politician willing to actually have a serious discussion about this out loud. I know the Tories are pretending now like they're real border hawks and they're really going to get control of our border. They're going to stop the dinghies coming in. They ain't. It was happening for 14 years under their watch. They ain't going to do shit. But let's address what was actually said there. So much said in just one clip and it really does expose how our political class is betraying us every single day. I mean, listen to how much they're spending on asylum seekers. In 2019... It was £17,000. Already way too much a year. That's way too much a year. If you come to this country, you should be a net benefit to this country. You shouldn't be draining it to the tune of £17,000 a year. And apparently that's actually the same conclusion that the government, that the Uniparty came to. We shouldn't be spending £17,000 a year on these migrants. No, we should be spending £41,000 a year on these migrants. Genius idea from our political class. In a country that is struggling economically. I mean, the average wage in this country, according to ONS, is... £30,472 a year. So asylum seekers for doing nothing except for existing and supposedly culturally enriching us are getting 10 grand over the average salary. Wow. I mean, just wow. Wow. Never forget Labour, the party of the working class, letting this happen in abundance. This is ridiculous. So asylum seekers are receiving more, effectively more in income, although it's obviously not being paid directly into their account, but in effect, 
they are getting more in income than the average working Brit. Isn't that a nice gig if you can get it, right? I know people say this is a joke in this country, but it's actually becoming kind of true. You really should just go to somewhere in the EU, chuck your passport in the river and come back on a dinghy and claim asylum. Because apparently that's a better career path than the career path that half of you are on. Our government is just truly, they are on crack. It tells you what our ruling class thinks about us. It really does. And our ruling class is spitting in our face even more. You know, recently there's been a discussion going around in Britain about landlords and about how Labour are apparently going to raise the capital gains tax to 40% decline. And something about how, I think it was Keir Starmer, basically implied that landlords aren't working people. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, right, this guy's going to sit there and talk about how landlords aren't working people, right? Try and distinguish them from working people while simultaneously potentially planning to take 40% of the capital gains. 40%. Bearing in mind, he did fuck all in the process. It's not like the government was involved in any of the profit making. No, they just come in and steal as they always do, right? He wants to take 40% of their capital gains and give it off to the migrants who aren't working, who are getting an income higher than the average Brit and then lecture the landlords about, oh, you're not working hard enough. You, know, you don't really work. You know, what you do isn't work. What the asylum seekers do is work. It's really difficult to hold your hand out for that long, right? Your arms start to ache. Like, what in the actual fucking dystopian clown show do we live in? I don't even understand. It just becomes more and more apparent every single day with these people. And again, I will say this in defense of Labour, not that I'm a Labour guy, obviously, but I'll say this in defense of Labour. A lot of these problems are not problems that Labour created. It's just problems that Labour have exacerbated and brought to the forefront. A lot of this stuff has been entrenched by the Tories and Labour, the Uniparty, for many, many years, which is why come next election, we should get behind that man on screen. But it's just like the dystopian clown world that we live in in this country, man. It's crazy. And then I have to see people talking about how Keir Starmer is doing an excellent job. Oh, he's doing a great job, Kiss. Like, fantastic. Releasing the criminals, taking from the working people, telling them they ain't working so he could give it to the people who aren't working, who shouldn't even be in this country in the first place. And then if you say anything, he calls you far right and tries to throw you in jail. Like, it's just such dystopian ass garbage. It's so dumb. Where do these people get off? I mean, I thought we lived in a system that was supposed to be by the consent of the governed. Let me ask you this, right? I know this is a slight tangent from the immigration topic, but it's not in, in a way right? When these people tax you on your income, when they tax you VAT, when they tax you capital gains, when they take the corporation tax, when they take the property tax, when they take the council tax, when they loot your corpse, when you die through inheritance tax, when they tax your fucking pension, like how many times do these people plan on taxing you to death and then handing off that money to migrants in luxury fashion? These people get to live in four star hotels, reigning in an income higher than the average Brit for doing nothing. And what's even crazier is how they've brainwashed half the population into going along and cheering this. Right? You see these morons all over like Twitter and stuff, these people who are like, who call you far right if you say anything. Like this is treachery, crookery. How's this any different from what a criminal gang would do? You're stealing our money and distributing it to all your mates at the point of a gun. And then and then if you if you commit tax evasion, they throw you in jail. It's like at this point, I'm at a point now where I'm like, look, I'm not gonna tell you to commit tax evasion. I'm not condoning tax evasion, but if you evade tax, I, listen, I'm not I'm not going to reprimand you. I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm not reprimanding you. Because at this point, I'm just like, why would anybody want to pay tax in this country? Like, seriously, why would you want, like, I see so many of these dumb fuck champagne socialist morons talking about how we need to pay more in tax and the rich need to pay their fair shit. I don't blame the rich for taking tax loopholes. If I had the money they had, I would take tax loopholes too. I would give as little money as I possibly could to this government, as little as I could. And I don't care how much you try and blackmail me, but oh, but the NHS, oh, shut up. That shit ain't going to the NHS, that's going to the migrants. Like, stop lying to my face, I'm so sick of it. I mean, the constant betrayal and insult from our government is just, it's absurd. Especially in this context, they're talking about how they slashed overseas aid, and now they're distributing it to some more migrants. And I'm just like, Keir Starmer was apparently talking about how he wants to address mass migration by the root causes. And I'm just like, surely, right? If you dedicate some of this overseas money to help some of these countries where these migrants are coming from, help improve the situation economically or societally or whatever it be, create some kind of stability in these countries with that foreign aid, that will perhaps disincentivize, to whatever degree that's worth, migrants from coming here. Right, if you combine that with the fact that you could actually just disincentivize migrants from coming here by having a much stricter asylum process and not letting them in by the tens of thousands and not offering them effectively an income higher than the average Brit, Right. If you stop doing all of these things, 
right? You could actually disincentivize them. And then you might see a significant downturn in the amount of migration we see. But our political class doesn't want to do that. Shock, horror. And one of the big reasons, and there's many, as to why our political class doesn't want to do that is because it keeps that man on screen out of office basically for the rest of his life. And it's not just about him. People like him. Populists like Nigel Farage, people actually care about the British people. They get shut out of the system. Because there is no appetite in the country for politicians who care about the British people once the British people have been thoroughly displaced. Once, once we've replaced all those inconvenient Brits with more convenient foreigners who will continue to vote for the establishment because the establishment offers them free stuff, there will be, there will be no appetite. The appetite for Nigel will die because simply put, he won't have a voter base anymore because they'll all have been displaced, replaced, or have left the country because of what the, what the Uniparty is doing to it. Do you see the plan? It's a non-racial version of the Great Replacement Theory. I mean, Nigel mentioned it there, it's mostly young men. He, he said it as kind of a side comment, but it's an important comment nonetheless. Mostly young men that are getting this money. We see this, right? I know they talk a lot about the women and children, but let's be honest, we see the videos of these people coming off the boats. You barely to never see women and children, only young men. And you find out a lot of the times that a lot of these young men, obviously not all of them, are hostile, actively hostile to the United Kingdom, hate the United Kingdom, think it's a colonizing, occupying, terrorist, horrible entity. What you would think our government would do is when hostile, military-aged men who hate this country rock up at our border en masse, you would think the government would turn them away. But instead, the government is funding them. And where do they get that money? They steal it from you. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? These people are stealing from the citizens, stealing from their people to give to the invader, to help abet the invasion. It's an invasion from within. I, like I said, I'm not trying to say that every person coming over the border is bad, but we know some of them are deeply hostile to the United Kingdom. We know this because they say it out loud. And of course, the Labour Party, the party of the cucks, go along with it all the time. Oh, you know, we should be ashamed of our, of our history. David Lammy talking about reparations and all the rest, right? But it's just like, how treacherous can you be? And this is just a brief warning for the Americans. Any Americans watching this, if there are any of you, probably not. This is why you need to vote for Donald Trump. Because our, what our country is, what our government is, is what happens when you allow the neoliberal establishment to completely take over our government. And the thing is, is they're not even very long-sighted in this way, right? Because you have to think about it, right? A lot of the people that we're bringing into this country are Muslim. And I, again, I'm not attacking all Muslims because they're not all the same. Because I always have to specify this because otherwise I'm, I'm a far-right bigot. But we know that some of these Muslims will come here and will want to implement Sharia law into this country. We know that 33% of British Muslims favour the implementation of Sharia law in this country. 32%. The Henry Jackson Society poll found that. And they found that the equal amount wanted Islam recognised as the national religion. We know that there's a large contingent of Muslims in this country now who would like this country to turn into a Sharia law state. What do you think will happen when you import more Muslims into this country? What do you think is going to happen? And then what? It may for now seem to the Uniparty, like the, the populace is easier to control, right? If you replace them with foreign nationals, obedient foreign nationals, by effectively bribing them with free stuff and, uh, you know, a place in this country for their relatives and all the rest, right? But over the course of time, if you keep allowing this to happen, you're actually going to turn this country into a Sharia law state. And at that point, right, they're not going to care about you. They're not going to thank you. They're going to come for you the same way they're going to come for everybody else. But then again, I'm sure these sleazebag politicians who are selling us out every single day will be taking the first plane ride to Monaco or to Dubai or to Spain somewhere, the Canary Islands, and will ditch us and leave us behind to deal with the mess that they completely manufactured by themselves. That's almost certainly what will happen. And then, of course, when any Brits fight to defend themselves from Sharia law rule, they'll call us racist and Islamophobic and, of course, xenophobic. And, of course, the new one. We can't forget the new buzzword. Far right. We'll definitely be very far right when we fight back. But let's, let's get on to another bit that he was talking about there. He's talking about how it costs 60k to convict foreign criminals, so to do the whole police investigations and get them through the courts and everything. 60k to convict them and then 45k a year to house them. Again, another example of, of <laughs> foreigners getting more money than the average Brit. Wouldn't it be nice if they dedicated some of this money to some people in Britain? Give, give some of the people in Britain, some of the struggling people in this country, 45k a year to house them. And an extra 60 grand on top. Wouldn't that be nice? But no, 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 no. You don't deserve it. You're just some lowly peasant. You're far right. You're not as valuable as a foreign criminal. It's, it's, such, it's so sad to look at this country, man. It's so sad to see what we've become. And this is why we need to push Nigel to the, to the fore. We cannot have Nigel as a continued third party candidate. Everybody on the right wing in this country needs to abandon the Tory party. Leave them not behind. Forget that. They betrayed you. You know it. You saw it. They betrayed you. 
and get behind, get behind Nigel, and let's let's prop him up as the opposition to the Labour Party, and then we might have a chance of winning. If we keep doing this 50-50 split between Reform and Tory, Labour will sweep the next election regardless, right? And let's get our government to stop spitting in our face every five seconds. And that's when I get annoyed when people tell me I have to pay more tax. I, like I said, I mentioned this a bit earlier, right? The whole thing about you know the rich should pay their fair share. We need to pay more in tax, you know, to fund the NHS more. Fuck that. You want to fund the NHS? Take the money from the migrants. Don't take it from me. Like the fuck do you think you are coming to come and asking for money from me? When the migrants get what is presumably tax free, forty one grand a year in income, you're coming to me. You're coming to the average Brit, talking about oh you know you need to pay more in tax because the NHS should slap you in your face. You are a knobhead. Like we should cut the tax rate for everyone in this country, everyone from Richard Branson to the fucking homeless. Even though I know they don't pay tax, we should cut all of it. All of it, every single bit of it should be cut. I mean, it's incredible. This kind of, like migrants getting forty one k a year from the taxpayer, and you're coming, you're coming to people who are making fifteen k a year, taking twenty percent income tax, so that you can hand it off to some foreign criminal. It's, it's so fucking ridiculous. And then, right, you might do the British taxpayer the courtesy of releasing the foreign criminal, not deporting him, but releasing him onto our streets, so that you can house a mean tweeter. If you're not feeding the brain fry yet, then I don't know what to tell you. And again, you know, you may be thinking, you know, why, why doesn't the Labour Party deport all these foreign criminals? It's simply because they don't want to. The Uniparty hates us and they want us to be unsafe. You can see that evidently by the fact that we have a in, incompetent, probably the worst police force I've seen on the planet, which is basically a woke militia policing our streets, able to keep basically nobody safe. A bunch of fat midgets rolling around. That's our police force. Then we have a lefty judiciary who enforces all of this lawfare that's entrenched in our legal code. And then the government who abets it all. And so, you know, these people couldn't care less about you. They hate you. They hate you. And like at some point, we have to turn away from this is just incompetence and negligence and towards this is by design. I mean, it's incredible. We're here paying for foreign criminals and we have our own. We have our own criminals to pay for that we have to house in jail, unfortunately. Right? We don't we don't need to be paying for the ones from bloody wherever. The last point they made about the lawyers, you know, who are who are involved in this. Yes, 100 percent the lawyers are a part of the problem here because a lot of them make a business out of processing these asylum claims they make money off of this business that's why they fight so hard against it because you know for some of them it's more important to rake in the dough than it is to care about the british people and their concerns it's that simple and also let's not forget let's not just blame the lawyers the ngos let's not forget the ngos they do this as well but let's move on to the next clip because we, we've established the reasons why the uniparty must be crushed and why we must prop up nigel and put him in the reins of power and maybe finally maybe we'll get some decent governance but we actually have to do that and nigel has laid out at least a somewhat decent plan for the next county council elections. Take a listen. Next May, we have the English County Council elections. It'll be the first big, genuinely national campaign from Reform UK, and we are throwing the kitchen sink at it. But there are 1,352 conservative county councillors out there whose seats are up for grabs next time round. Interestingly, a huge number of them genuinely agree with us and what we stand for. You see, the Conservative Party in the country is very different to the Conservative Party in Westminster. So I'm about to send a letter to all 1352 of them to say, look, we are standing in every single seat in the English county elections. We will not be standing aside for absolutely anybody. You know in your heart of hearts that this is four years on from peak Boris when the Conservative Party was doing well. And you know that the vast majority of you are going to lose your seats. But before I select the candidates and our branches will be picking these by the end of November. I want to give those county councillors who really believe in the country, who understand and know that things need to be turned around because we're in such a state of decline. I want to give them the opportunity to come and join us and stand for Reform UK. I think it's the right and decent thing to do. So they've got a deadline in which to respond to me. We won't take anybody. I mean, clearly, if they're not suitable, or if they wish to bring their own brand of Tory infighting, we wouldn't want to know. But I do believe that the vast majority of them are very decent men and women who believe in very similar values to me and to a party that has now hit a membership of 93,000 and is growing by the hundreds every single day. So it's up to those councillors to decide what they want to do. We're going to stand in every single seat. We won't stand aside for anybody. It's a big chance for them to come and join us and to understand but it's actually irrelevant whether Kemi Badenoch or Robert, oh, Jenrick, that's right, or Robert Jenrick uh, wins the Tory leadership contest. 
The brand is broken. It's done. You can't betray people consistently, election after election, manifesto after manifesto, without a massive price to pay. So here goes. I'm going to push the button. It's on its way. So there you go, there you go. That's effectively the plan, right? To poach a bunch of Tories to join reform because he thinks there's a lot of people in the Tory party who actually quite agree with the agenda of reform, not with this weird neoliberal agenda that has now run rife through the Tory party in Westminster. But I must I must give an urge of caution. Not that Nigel's going to hear this, but if he does, I must, I must urge caution. Because here's the thing. You have to be aware that a lot of the Tories, and we found this out in recent years, these are wolves in sheep's clothing. They may tell you that they agree with you. They agree with your agenda. They say that to, to the Tory voters all the time. Why do you think the Tory voters voted for him for 14 years? Because they told him how much they agreed. They told the Tory voters, yes, we want a referendum. We really want a referendum. And then the moment they got the referendum, got the result they didn't like, they tried to, you know, push back the whole time. They told... Tory voters, yeah, we want to deal with the migration crisis, and you see how how they've done with that. These a lot of them are wolves in sheep's clothing, and so it's good to put out this open letter and to expand the party, but be careful about the sinos that you let in, the conservatives in name only. Don't just let them all in because you want to expand the party because the party will die if you inject a bunch of poison into it. We need reform to stay reform. We don't want it diluted with neoliberal Tory garbage. But overall, it is a good attempt to help broaden the party and build it up. Because reform does have real momentum and they need to keep building. Because we need to finally just back, we need to back Nigel, back reform. I said this earlier on in the video, just forget the Tory party, forget, bin them off. We're done with the Tory party now. We're done with uniparty politics. We're done with all the bullshit. Right. We, we, the British people, want something new. We're sick to death of uniparty politics running this country into the ground. And I know most of you are too. So join the team. Stop voting Tory. There were so many of you morons voting Tory at the last election, bro. Five million of you voting Tory. For what? For what? They failed you. They will continue to fail you, as they quite consistently do. So back somebody who actually cares about this country. And the proof is in the pudding. Nigel Farage has been getting endless abuse pretty much his whole political career for standing up for the British people and what they think. Nigel Farage doesn't benefit from saying the things he says. He gets had a tremendous backlash for saying the things that he says, and he does it anyways because he cares. So I would suggest get behind Nigel. Abandon the Tory party in droves, because if you don't, it will be another Labour sweep come the next election. It won't matter how Keir Starmer performs in this job, and he's already performing horrendously, because at the end of the day, right, if we keep splitting our vote with Reform and Tory, because too many of you are too stubborn to abandon that joke of a party, then... Labour are going to keep sweeping for who knows how long. You're going to get even more years of two-tier, free-gear, Lord Ali loving Keir Starmer. So, yeah, let's just get behind Nigel. And uh, let me know what you lot think about this down below. Please remember to like and subscribe, people, and see ya.